Well, good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. All right, um, the knife I'm making tonight is for me. So I'm talking through it, which is something I don't normally do on my videos for knife making. But I figure it's my knife so I can do what I want. Okay, now the style of knife I use for breaking animals, um, is an English butcher's knife. I've got a uh, butchery class coming up next week, so I need to rush this one. Um, and of course, when I went out to make a start on it, I couldn't find my template. So I've got to draw a new knife up. inch and a quarter for the thickness. Just give ourselves a line at the inch and a quarter. Okay. And I just want to curve that back. This is a breaking style knife. I actually want to bring that curve back a fair way. Just put some meat back behind the point. Okay, now we've got seven inches long on the blade, five inches long on the handle. Um, I find that tends to be a good size. We use those pencil line marks just to start setting it out. I normally have a bird's beak and sort of pommel end on it. Come around in a curve there, and then it comes back up. Here we've got the choil on the blade, which is where the bevel's going to start. So the bevel's going to come. Pretty much like that. Little filing notch or sharpening notch. And I'm going to have a brass bolster at this piece. And that will come back around. Put a little bit of a palm swell in it. Pretty much palm swell. Okay, so there's our brass bolster. That's gonna need a couple pins. Probably move that one up there instead of there. Pin there. Pin there. Um, now I probably will end up freestyling my pins when I'm out there, just dyeing them in. Uh, exactly the same as I just done there. Um, the pins on the brass section, I want to have it up in the meat of the brass. It should hold this little piece pretty well. Uh, the pins here, I try to bring it back the distance from there to there centered in my first line. And then I want to roughly match that distance coming back. That's my second line for that pin. Here, I want to end up 
about central and the same distance off that end. And that should give me a nice, even looking pin placement. So from there, we're just gonna cut it out. Okay, so there's our basic knife design. Um, nice and simple. Um, once you've got it cut out, you wanna try it in your hand, see how it feels. Um, obviously it's paper, it's not steel or anything. You're not gonna get a true feel of it, but you can feel if there's any unusual lumps or bumps. Um, and that looks like it's gonna fit pretty well. I'll end up adjusting with this when I do the steel anyway. I'll overcut the size and then as I grind it back, I'll be hand checking it and making sure it's all okay. All right, let's go make it steel. When it comes to my own knives, I've got very set preferences in what I like. Um, I like to use carbon steel, as you can see, this carbon. Rusty as all get out. Um, that's not gonna matter. We're gonna remove that surface anyway. Um, so it's gonna be absolutely fine once we get around to finishing the knife. So, all the tight fit. I need to shorten it a touch. There's our basic shape ready to go. And as I said, I'm gonna cut it a bit big um, and then I'll grind it back to make it fit just perfect. So there's our basic shape cut out, nice and big. Uh, haven't even started on the handle, we'll do that on the grinder. All right, here we are at the grinder. Nice large tool rest there, just so I can rest it on it. Um, and we're gonna pull it into shape. Just using an old, worn out 40 grip belt. Uh, this is pressure grinding, it's gonna cut anyway. Um, don't need to use a new belt. And I'm gonna bugger up a new belt if I do it with that. So let's get to it. That's fitting pretty well in my hand now. Feels good. Um, might still need to take a little bit of meat out of here, uh, but I've got to use the small wheels just to clean up these curves. Uh, so once I do that, then I'll clean anything that I need out of the center of there. So yeah, just maybe a wee bit more out of there. Um, hog a material off really quick. Using an old belt, it's absolutely fine. Um, doesn't matter how hot you get the steel at this stage because it's not heat treated and when it gets too hot you quench it in my nasty looking quench bucket down there um, these things get talked about on knife makers forums all the time what's in your quench bucket uh, mine's just water and shavings until I can't get a knife in there anymore and then I'll empty the shavings out and put more water in um, but yeah, that's particularly nasty stuff. So now we've got the basic shape by doing the pressure grinding. I'm gonna use the flat of the belt here um, and smooth everything out. You can see there's a few lumps and bumps here. So I just wanna clean those up before we go on to the next bit. Okay, you might be able to see, I've put a little bit of a curve into the back of this by taking a bit of meat out of here when I straightened it. Um, and that just gives it a more pleasing effect, having that little bit of swell up, matches the palm swell going down. Okay, on we go to the small wheel, and we're just gonna tidy up that handle section. As you can hear, it's running a lot slower. If you run the high speeds, you're just gonna burn out the bearings in your small wheel. Okay, you can see that little bit of up and down grinding still and where it's shiny on the sides of it. You just want to get that last little bit out. Same on this side. 
all to shape. Um, now, because of the steel I use, um, this carbon steel I bought cheap because uh, it's already hard in a 42 Rockwell, which means it makes it a really hard thing for the drill to drill. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is put it in the forge, heat it up and let it cool down. And then we'll drill it after that. Hey, just heating it up the way I've done doesn't take all the hardness out of it, but it does reduce it back down. Um, so it is going to be a lot softer and that's the reason why I own carbide bits is so I can drill through something that's a little bit harder. As you can see, didn't get the heat all the way to the end. I'm not worried about it because it's the handle that I'm trying to soften. So putting the brass on. I was going to finish a little bit before that. About there. By the time I clean up the edges on it. So again, we're going to put one pin up there, one pin over here. We want to keep it in the meat. And like I said before, we're just going to go in half that way. And then about that same distance off that. On this end, we're going to halfway point. out there and that should look fantastic okay another question in the knife making blacksmith groups a lot is how do i drill hardened steel uh this is what i've got for them uh they are pure carbide bits they're not a carbide tip they're made with carbide um and so unlike a masonry bit which has got the carbide tip on it these are made totally out of carbide and they are not cheap um this eighth inch one, I think was about $120. Um, and this one here, which is a quarter inch one, uh, that was oh, about 160 bucks, I think. Um, they are fantastic. They will go through hardened steel, but they cost a lot of money. Uh, don't try and drill copper or anything with them because they snap and you tend to cry once you snap a $120 drill bit, let me tell you. I just use a timber block to support underneath, so you can see it's nasty uh, because I use cutting fluid and I tend to hold it by hand, not in the clamp. Uh, they're not sharpened at this stage, but make sure if you're doing it, you've got a really good grip on it. All right, once I've started my holes, a little bit of cutting fluid. Helps to keep, keep the tip cool, lubricated, makes it go through so much easier. And these ones always go back in their case once I've drilled with them. All right, just while we're waiting for the forge to heat up, a little bit of a shop tour. Um, people don't realise how small my shop actually is. Um, this is the outside door of the garage. There's my anvil. This is why I don't forge in the rain because my camera would get wet um, little coal forge there uh, which isn't right and I've got to do a new build on it uh, right there is my power hammer which I haven't got set up uh, problem is it's gonna be very loud and my neighbors literally back onto my house There we've got the bandsaw, my spare anvil, my rip saws in behind that, uh, covered up with a raincoat because my roof leaks. Uh, my heat treat oven is tucked in there. The shelving there contains my carpentry tools. Um, there's my steel storage, plate storage, uh, more carpentry tools over this side, belt storage. La La Farms coffee cup, my drill press, uh, bench grinder converted to a polisher, which by the way kids, uh, they run way too fast to use as a polisher. 
uh, my Easy Sharp sharpening system and the world's messiest bench, as well as a bit of a storage up there. So as you can see, things are pretty tight. I've got to actually make my mind up what I'm doing before I walk in so I can rearrange things to do it. Okay, so in the forge we go, we just want to bring it up to non-magnetic, oh, a little, couple of degrees past non-magnetic. Okay, so once we're up to temperature, come out, check it against the magnet, just to make sure it's not attracting it. Straighten the oil and up and down. Side of the straight. go all cooled down so i'll take it inside clean it and temper it down in the oven here we go all cleaned up and into the oven we go that's going to sit in the oven for two two hour cycles i've got a video on the heats and that sort of thing prefer to do it in my heat treat oven um but as you saw there's not a lot of space out in the garage so it's not really an option it's covered up so the grinder dust doesn't get all over it and to uncover it, power it up and everything for just thermocycling that one knife, it's not really worth the effort. All right, I'm gonna cut this one off here. Like I said, I'm shooting this one a little bit differently. It's my knife, I'm gonna talk about it and give you a bit of a chat. Um, whack down in the comments below what you think of that change. All right, thank you very much for watching and bye for now.